Hey everybody, welcome back to Auto Scholar with Mr. B. I'm Mr. B and today we are learning about regenerative braking. So uh, the system that I'm going to be teaching today is most relative to the Toyota hybrid system or the Synergy Drive system, but it will apply to other hybrids and also with electric vehicles. Regenerative braking is not very complicated, but it is something that you need to learn if you're wanting to know more about these vehicles and of course apply that to repairing these vehicles. So I do have my CT200H right here, which has the Prius drivetrain in it. I also have a couple of trainers that we're gonna learn on today. I'm gonna to take you all the way through uh, from, from A to Z on regenerative braking. So let's go inside, let's go to my board and start learning. One of the biggest advantages of electric vehicles and hybrid electric vehicles are the advantage of being able to recapture some of the energy that it expends by moving forward. So this we do a lot with regenerating of the brakes. So basically what we do is we take the motors that are in our system and we turn them into generators. And I'm gonna explain a little bit about more of that later, but the Toyota system that we're using in most of Toyota's hybrid vehicles are gonna be 60 to 70% efficient at regenerating the energy that is lost. So in other words, um, just to show you on the board here, if we have two hills, okay, we have two large hills and we have two vehicles, one being a gas vehicle, one being a hybrid vehicle. And we go up these hills with the gas vehicle, okay? And at the bottom of the hill, I am at a full tank of gas. And at the very top of the hill, I am at empty. So we are at full to empty. So after that, if I take the car and I roll it back down to the bottom of the hill, I still don't have any gas in the car. I can't go anywhere. I'm not recapturing any energy that I've expended getting up this hill. Now, if we use a hybrid system or even a lot of electric vehicles will do this as well. If we go up this hill and we use, we have 100% of our battery at the top and we have 0% uh, if we have 100% at the bottom and then we have 0% at the top, in other words, we've used every bit of the battery power that we have getting up this hill. If I turn the car back around and go back down this hill, I will have 60 to 70% of the battery uh, available charged so I can keep on going through my day. So in other words, in a gasoline vehicle, when I use this energy, it's gone. It's turned to heat and the cooling system you know, will chaperone it out into the atmosphere where this, when I come back down this hill, I'm turning my motors into generators. I'm regenerating the power that I use to get up that hill as I'm coming down the hill. It's almost like if you've uh, ever been walking and you're getting kind of tired getting up the hill, right? And then when you walk back, you're going down the hill and you're like, ah, oh, this is so much better. Well, hybrid vehicles and electric vehicles will do that as well. And the also, another good thing about this is when I'm using regenerative braking, I'm not using my regular braking system, which this is why on like just the standard Toyota Prius, the brake pads will last a very long time. So uh, Torque News just did a survey on that. and They say that 80% of people that own a Toyota Prius normally replace their brake pads past 100,000 miles, okay? And 20% of those owners it actually takes 200,000 miles to wear out the brake pads to need replacement. So uh, as I'm using my regeneration and I'm not using my regular brake system, I'm having less wear and tear on that brake system, which of course gets me a drop in maintenance cost. Now there are some downsides to regenerative braking. So just like I can't take a tiny small motor and power a car with it, uh, generators just like motors have limits, okay? So the regeneration is limited to a couple of things. One being brake command. In other words, I'm, how hard I press the brakes is going to, to determine whether I'm using regen or I'm using my traditional brake system. So also battery charge is going to be, uh, affect that almost you know, exclusively. So if I have, if I'm going down this hill and I happen to have a 100% battery, and I'm driving down the hill and I'm kind of braking or coasting down the hill. If I have a hundred percent battery, I'm going to be using my brakes almost exclusively. The main reason is I can't fit anymore in my battery. So if I'm already at the hundred percent charge 
on a battery, I can't put any more in it. Also, of course, I'm limited to the torque of that generator and how much drag it can produce. So that's just something to think about, again, how regenerative braking works and how we recapture power. Of course, we can't recapture power at 100%, that's physically impossible, but 60 to 70% is actually a pretty good return on recapturing the power that we use in a hybrid vehicle. Okay, so I have my console lab trainer, this electric trainer that I use with my students. And basically what I've done is I've taken, the, this has a, a permanent magnet electric motor in here. And what I've done is I've just wired it up, you know, power to a switch and to ground. And when I turn this on, my electric motor is going to turn. So let's just act as if this is a car that's starting out and we're driving and we're using the um, electric battery to drive this motor. Now, uh, you know, I'm depleting power from the battery and there is a way to get this back. So as this is turning, remember that you have all this kinetic energy balled up in this car and it's moving down the road. And now when we go to put on our brakes, if we use regenerative braking, we can take some of that power and put it back into the battery so we can use at a later time. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch this off. I'm gonna take this right here we're gonna wire this up to this LED and we're gonna act as if the LED is the battery on the vehicle. So when this LED lights up, it is if the battery is getting charged. So we take this magnet and we spin it. So we're not adding power to it anymore. And we're taking this and we're spinning this as if the car is slowing down, okay? And so now this has some drag on it, okay? This isn't that very easy to turn. And that drag is the magnetic resistance inside that motor. But what that does is when the rotor and the stator, you know, when the, when the uh, rotor spins inside the stator, it induces a voltage that goes into this LED and lights it up. So this is how the motor generators work in almost every hybrid and electric vehicle on the market. So let's go out here to our Gen 3 Prius trainer and I'll show you the motor generators. Okay, so this is my hybrid trainer here from Consolab, great company. And this is their uh, Gen 3 trainer. So it has a cutaway of the transmission that shows the motor generator one and two very well. So this is your motor generator one right here. It's the larger of the two, and it is does the brunt of the regenerative braking. And this is your MG2, it does play a role as well. But as you can see, MG2 is just way bigger than MG1 is. Uh, MG1 acts more as an alternator and a starter when the engine is running. Also, remember on this vehicle, we can use engine braking. So we have a dampener here, and that's the piece that you see that's spinning in here. And that dampener can hold the engine and we can use the engine's compression as an aid to braking on the vehicle, just like any other vehicle with a manual or an automatic transmission using engine braking. This works the same. So when we put our foot on the brakes, there's a lot of decisions that are actually being made. Technically, the driver doesn't have any mechanical input to the braking system. So we have a brake actuator mounted on our um, firewall and it gets the signal that the driver wants the car to break. So not only does it get the signal, it will tell uh, the, through the communication system, it'll tell other control modules how hard I am braking. So this is the module here that is inside your brake actuator. And it has you know, this valving here and that sends the brake fluid where it's supposed to go. But also we talk to the battery control module because like I said before, we have to know how much charge the battery has so we know how much regen energy we can put back into the battery. If the battery's too full, the battery control module will signal to the ABS module, hey, I can't fit any more power in me. You're gonna have to use your regular brakes and the car will use the regular brake pads and rotors, uh, the friction brakes to stop the car. Also, at a certain mile per hour, it doesn't make sense to use Regen, so we will use regular brake pads. And also, Regen does not work in an ABS event, okay? So just keep that in mind moving forward that uh, the majority of the braking done just in normal 
everyday driving is done by the region. And this is why the brake pads last so long because they're not being used as much as would be on a normal car. You know, a normal car, 40, 50,000 miles, you need brake pads, maybe even sooner. On these cars, 100,000 miles is pretty much the normal. And I've seen them go a lot longer than that. Mostly I see them around 150 to 175,000 miles needing brakes. But again, we're taking this power and we're putting it back through these orange cables. Now these are AC motors and AC generators. We're, we're, we are uh, using AC current and we're generating AC current. Of course, the battery works off of direct current. So we have to take all this power and we have to turn it into DC powder. And we use the inverter up here to do that. Uh, and what that does is it flips it around the AC uh, voltage and it turns it into direct current. And then of course we just mainline that back to the battery, which is represented here. And the battery is going to, of course, tell the battery control module you know, how much power it has and if it, it is available for regen. So uh, if you've ever put on your brakes kind of hard and you feel like the brakes kind of slide into a, a, a tougher brake or a harder brake, that's because the, the brake module saying, okay, we need to use our actual brake pads. And so you'll get a little bit different feel as the brake pads activate versus the regen. But this is also why the brakes on this car are so touchy. And if you've come from a conventional vehicle into a Toyota hybrid, you'll, you'll have about a week to two weeks of really adjusting to the brake feel on these cars because they are so touchy. So yeah, MG2, uh, MG1, and Again, MG2 is, is, is bolted uh, to a uh, planetary gear set that goes directly out to the uh, main drive on these vehicles. And so this is the one that does the majority of the regenerative braking. And it's so big, that's why you, know, you have these huge magnets in there that will provide that resistance. And that's what gives that braking effect. And it also what gives it that induction and allows it to generate power. So as you can see, we're just moving under electric power right now. And I'm driving about 15 miles per hour. The engine just kicked on. I'm going up a, a little bit of a hill here. But as I let off, when I'm coasting, the car is gonna put power back into the battery through the motor generators. You can also see this on the charge gauge as I accelerate. When I let off, you see that dips into charge. And when I put my foot on the brakes, that'll go deeper into that charge. And what that's doing is it's using those motor generators to put drag on the axles, which will charge the battery. Well, thanks so much for joining me today on this lesson on regenerative braking. Again, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. I try to answer the uh, questions in my comments at least once a day across all videos on the platform. So I am on YouTube at Auto Scholar Mr. B. Here's my page here. Don't forget to like this video if it taught you anything. And of course, hit that subscribe button for more lessons on hybrid vehicles. I'm gonna be adding a lot more stuff. I'm also gonna be adding some EV stuff as we prepare to start teaching this to my students. So I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, VK if you're in Eastern Europe, follow me over there on Auto Scholar Mr. B or Master Tech Mr. B. So thank you for joining me. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you next time on Auto Scholar with Mr. B.